In this lesson, we're going to look at these things called function rules, which is really just a fancy word for the equations that we've already been doing, the linear equations. So the directions might look a little different, but it's asking the same things that we did back in the graphing chapter. So don't be confused or misled by the directions. I'll help you understand what they're asking. So a function rule is an equation that describes the relationship between inputs and outputs. The independent value is the input, and the dependent variable is the output. And I know you've used these words in science class, and we also used them in an earlier lesson. So that's just some vocab out of the way. Now they want us to translate these sentences into equations, which you actually did back in, I don't know, maybe like sixth grade or something. So this one says the output, which we know is another way of saying y, is, is the math word for equals, five less than the input means the input take away 5. So that's my answer for letter A. You just have to translate it as you read it. Let's look at letter B. Write a function rule for the output is the square of the input. So when you square a number, you multiply it by itself, and then we have a fancy exponent to represent square and that's a little 2 up in the air. So that's the equation that would represent letter B. So this is definitely something that you've done before, but the directions are changing. Now we're calling it a function, but all they want you to do in example 2 is to say what do you get out of this equation when you plug in 3. So very simply, you rewrite the equation, but instead of x, we're going to put 3. So y equals 2 times 3 plus 5, so that gives me 11. And that's all they want. Now in a moment, we're going to look at something that we did back in Chapter 4, the graphing chapter. And it's using a table to make a graph. But the only difference now is that instead of calling it a graph, we're calling it a function. So it's the same type of thing. Now remember, an ordered pair is something that's written in the form x comma y. So what we're going to do is we're going to find ordered pairs and create this equation, create this function graph by taking x values. They just picked 1, 2, 3. You can pick any numbers you want unless it tells you what numbers you have to use. Anyway, so they plugged in 1 into the equation right here, into the function, and they said 1 plus 2 is 3, and so they plotted the ordered pair, or the coordinate point, 1, 3. Then they plugged in 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. So they plotted the point, or the ordered pair, 2, 4. Plugged in 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. You get the picture. So let's do one ourselves. Now for this function, they tell us which x values to use. So we have to use these x values in our table. So let's fill them in together. Negative 1, 0, 1, 2. If it didn't say, you could plug in whatever you wanted. So now in the next column, all we're going to do is we're going to plug in the number for x. So y equals negative 2 times negative 1 plus 1. Then you do your calculations, so I get 2 plus 1, which is 3. So that gives me the ordered pair, negative 1, 3. So in a moment, I'll plot that, but not right now. I want to finish the chart. Now let's do the next one. y equals negative 2 times 0 plus 1. So that gives me 0 plus 1, which is 1. So uh, that gives me the ordered pair 0, 1. Pause the video and finish the chart. All right, now all that we have to do, all that's left, is to just plot the points. So let's plot negative 1, 3, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 
and 2, negative 3. Now, if you've done it correctly at this level, this beginner level, it's going to make a line. So if your points don't make a line, I'm, what I mean by making a line is they all fit in the same line. It's not like a connect the dots kind of thing. When they make a straight line, then you know that you've done it correctly because at the beginner level, um, they all make a line. So let's connect them. And then last thing, I'll just write the name of the function near it so my reader knows what equation made this line. Okay. So let's just wrap this up. Down at the bottom, it tells us you could deal with functions in words. You could deal with them in equations. You could have an input-output table. You could have a mapping diagram. Or you could have a graph. These all represent different ways of writing the same thing and remember, this is very similar to what we did back in Chapter 4. Okay, if you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.